Hello, this is Linda Cheek, and welcome to an introduction to The Seven Steps to Healing. In my former days as a working physician, I was more interested in helping people find healing. So now, retired, I aim to pass on my knowledge to anyone who wants to learn. This topic, The Seven Steps to Healing, is the basis for what I do, teach you how to help your body heal itself. You can get more information from my two websites. SevenPillarsTotalHealth.com is a website full of natural healing and alternative medicine. And DoctorsOfCourage.org is a website of information pertaining to the attacks on doctors today that treat pain or have treated with alternative medicine and have found themselves the target of the United States government through no fault of their own except compassion for their patients. Energy medicine is the medicine of the future. Its time has come. My pathway learning the importance of energy in healing involved acupuncture that led me to auricular therapy, to biotherapeutic drainage, and finally to homeopathy. The information I am sharing here is important for everyone to know about. It does not take a doctor's knowledge to heal disease. In fact, conventional doctors don't know how to heal disease, but the principles are simple. I hope you can learn them from this presentation and apply them to your and your family's lives. The basis for the seven steps to healing is this. What goes into the body must come out. Think of the body as an aquarium, an enclosed ecosystem. Nutrients and oxygen are required for the living tissues in the aquarium to stay alive, and toxins and waste products must be eliminated. If they aren't, they will build up, poisoning the fish, eventually the plants, and the place looks like this, decaying sludge. In the body, that is called disease. Disease is caused from conditions within the environment of the body. When the environment is unhealthy, the body's organs break down and cannot function. Disease is the expression of that failure to function properly. Health can be described by this picture of a bridge. Optimal health is the center line. Suboptimal health falls in between the center line and the edge of the bridge. As long as you are on the bridge, though, you are unaware of any disease process. But the closer to the edge of the bridge you go, the more damage there is to the enzyme systems and natural defenses in the body, and the more toxins are accumulated in the body. Each person is at as a unique, a unique spot on the bridge, depending on their own body's environmental condition. Individualized medicine is the key to energy medicine. No two people are alike. What that means is you can't expect more than one person to be standing at any particular spot on the bridge. Each person is at a unique spot that's depending on his own body's environmental condition. Now, individualized medicine is the key to energy medicine. No two people are alike. So to expect everyone to react to a medicine the same way is obviously wrong. And yet all of our conventional medical proof tries to do just that. Disease is falling off the bridge. And the bungee cord that keeps you from just crashing your head against the rocks below is conventional medicine. However, the bungee cord just snaps the person back to the edge of the bridge and it doesn't take much of a push to go off of it again. Conventional medicine cannot move you back to the center line, but there is a medicine that can, and the seven steps to healing is one such path. So how do you know what causes the body to move to the edge of the bridge? Or, in other words, what is the main cause of disease today? The answer is toxicity. Disease is characterized by three processes. First, the excretion of toxins is blocked. 
The normal mechanisms that the body uses to destroy and remove toxins is temperature or fever and inflammation. Those natural processes have been taken away by conventional medicine. So step two is that the, cell, the toxins are then deposited in the cells of the body. And finally, the cells and tissues are degenerated by the toxins. They cannot perform their function and disease is diagnosed. Now, in order for the excretion of toxins to be blocked, toxins first have to get into the body. Where do toxins come from? Well, there are two methods. First, auto-intoxication, which is poisoning from inside the body. And hetero-intoxication, which is poisoning from outside the body. Auto-intoxication comes from stress. Stress is a major cause of acidity in the body. Inadequate nutrition also increases acidity. It also prevents the formation of necessary enzymes for normal body processes and the elimination of toxins. And then the last cause of auto-intoxication is failure to excrete toxins. The body is designed to remove toxins from the blood as toxins take the place of nutrients and oxygen. So if they are not excreted, they get stored in the cells. Eventually the stored toxins fill up the cells, preventing them from performing their necessary functions. Hetero-intoxication, or poisoning from outside the body, comes from pollution, including environmental pollution, but also chemicals in our food and water supply. Drugs and food additives. Other causes of toxicity are dysbiosis, an acidifying diet, the absence of chi, and autoimmune responses to toxins inside, on, or surrounding the cells. What is dysbiosis? It is the absence of the right bacteria that supports a healthy body and the presence of the wrong microorganisms. So what part do bacteria play in disease? Which is the problem? The landlord, which is the environment in the body, or the tenant or microorganisms? Well, bacterias, viruses, and other parasites are merely opportunistic inhabitants in a diseased environment. They are not the cause of disease, but the result. The second cause of toxicity is an acidifying diet. An acidified body cannot eliminate toxins, so they are deposited into the cells. The body is acidified by the foods we eat, a diet made up of less fruits and vegetables and more processed foods and meats. And the third major cause of toxicity and disease is a loss of chi. Chi is the active principle forming part of any living thing. Chi literally translates as breath, air, or gas, and figuratively as vital energy or life force. One factor little considered in Western culture is the healthy base of chi. But chi is a vital part of health. Chi comes and goes out of the body. It is important to learn how to restore your chi. And finally, the autoimmune responses to toxins inside, on, or surrounding the cells cause disease. To explain the autoimmune response, think of the particles inside the cell as belonging to two categories, like the sides of a seesaw self on one side and non-self on the other. So we have self here on the left and non-self here on the right. When a healthy baby is born, the cells would contain only self. But as toxins are taken in and stored, in more non-self appear. But as long as there is more self than non-self, that is, the seesaw is heavier on the self side, the immune system recognizes and will remove the non-self. But as life continues, the cells become filled with more toxins. Eventually, the seesaw is balanced even. Then the immune system has a hard time telling the difference between self and non-self. And finally, when the toxins outnumber the self particles, the seesaw is flipped. And you have 
the immune system now thinking that the cell is foreign and attacks it. And that's an autoimmune reaction. So the causes of an autoimmune reaction is the inability of the body to distinguish self from non-self. And this is created by conventional medicine through vaccine overload, injections of unnatural compounds like hepatitis B in infants, and the overuse of steroids stopping natural reactions. Now can disease be cured? You bet it can, but not with conventional medicine. We have to ag admit the fact that conventional medicine has had its heyday, but it is now time to consider that it is not all that it is cracked up to be. And no matter how hard conventional doctors and university PhDs poo-poo the concepts of functional medicine, no army can withstand an idea whose time has come. The secret to curing disease is to correct the toxic environment that creates the disease. And that process is called the seven steps to healing. The seven steps to healing is a multifaceted process to enable the body to restore itself to a healthy state. The steps are eliminate roadblocks and environmental toxins, open the organs of cleansing, Restore the enzyme systems. Remove the, dis the toxins. Remove the dysbiosis. Tonify the chi. And give nutritional support. The steps are not sequential. You can address multiple of them or all of them at the same time with different remedies or procedures. Now I will briefly explain each step. They are much more thoroughly explained in the DVD. Step 1. Eliminate roadblocks and environmental toxins. What are roadblocks? Roadblocks are energetic blockages to healing. Scars on or inside the body can cause blockages to healing. So a person should avoid surgery if at all possible. Surgery is not benign and can set up blockages to healing anywhere in the body. The first rib are problems which are unknown to conventional medicine, and I'm not going to go into it here. However, they can be addressed through auricular therapy or other forms of energy medicine. If a person uses remedies correctly and does not see a positive effect on their health, then there is probably a roadblock. Roadblocks can be removed, but it takes a practitioner who knows energy medicine to do it. Environmental toxins are those things that are taken into our body through simple exposure. They get into our body through the lungs, such as air pollution, through our drinking water, such as fluoride, pesticides, herbicides, drugs, and hormones through absorption of waterborne toxins through our skin, the major one here is chlorine, through toxins in the food we eat, pesticides and herbicides through our fruits and vegetables, through man-made chemicals in our processed foods, through toxins absorbed through the skin, including cosmetics, creams and lotions, household cleaners, antiperspirants and hand sanitizers and now due to the Zika virus which we are increasing our exposure to toxins through insect sprays. All of these forms of environmental toxins need to be eliminated as much as possible. The next two steps involve removing the toxins from the body. So if toxins are continuing to be put into the body the process of cleansing will take longer. Step two is to open the organs of cleansing. Cleansing is the process of discharging the toxic accumulations in the body. Before any other tissues can be targeted for detox, the organs of cleansing should be treated to ensure the toxins removed elsewhere are permanently removed from the body. The most important primary organs are the liver and the kidney. The secondary organs, which are the skin, mucous membranes, and genitals, are usually used to a lesser degree. When the body has to resort to these organs of cleansing, the primaries are either clogged or overwhelmed with toxins. 
Examples of the body's use of these organisms, the secondaries, for discharge of toxins are in the conditions such as eczema, psoriasis, and a vaginal discharge. The liver is the body's primary detoxifier. And then the kidneys remove the toxins and excess acids from the blood. If you attempt to de detoxify without first opening the organs of cleansing, you end up with a healing crisis, which includes flu-like symptoms, headaches, muscle aches, etc. Healing crises do not mean you are getting better. The toxins are released from the cells and are in the blood, but if unable to be removed by the liver and kidneys, they will simply be stored away in the cells again, and you will be back to square one. Healing crises are avoided, however, if you do the seven steps to healing. Step three is to restore the enzyme systems. Enzymes are necessary for cellular processes to take place. When the enzyme systems are damaged, the cellular processes stop and a disease is present. Toxins in the body often block or damage the enzyme systems. Inadequate nutrition often cause deficiencies of trace elements needed for proper enzyme function. So the important consideration here is a proper diet. For supplements, you must choose a company that you trust, where the supplement has in it what it says it has. As for supplements, I personally do not trust any supplement made in America. That is because there is no quality control. The FDA does nothing to ensure the quality of supplements. There are no standards and no requirements. So what have we learned so far about the cause of disease? In the search for an explanation of the disease process, we've learned that toxicity is what causes disease. The body's reaction to the toxins deposited determines the disease, and toxins decrease the body's means of healing the disease. So step four is remove the toxins. Now what are we trying to cleanse? The cell. If a disease process has been identified, the toxins must be removed out of the damaged cells to the bloodstream for them to be removed from the body so that the damaged cells can be repaired or replaced and the disease process halted or reversed. In conventional medicine, toxicity is not even a recognized problem. That is why chronic diseases have not been cured. But there is a science that does explain toxicity and can cure chronic disease and addiction, and that science is homeopathy. Now we do not have the time here to explain homeopathy. There is a short explanation on the DVD for the seven steps to healing and also the DVD for the real cause of drug abuse. And then I have a full DVD that explains only homeopathy. Now reviewing the steps to healing so far, we have discussed eliminating the roadblocks to cleansing, opening the cleansing organs, restoring the enzyme systems, and removing the toxins. So now step five is to remove the dysbiosis. So again, what is dysbiosis? Dysbiosis is the absence of the proper bacterial flora that supply a healthy body and the presence in the body of the wrong bacterial flora and other microorganisms. Now on the DVD, I list the types of microorganisms and the diseases that are caused by dysbiosis, which are thereby curable by the seven steps to healing. Things ranging from simple allergies to fibromyalgia and cancer. Now, the first possible cause of dysbiosis is failure to get inoculated with the right organisms. That happens at birth. First, if a baby is born by C-section, which is 25% of our population, they are born dysbiotic. That is because the good bacteria are picked up by the infant as it passes through the birth canal. Also, often the mother is too deficient in the correct organisms herself 
due to her use of antibiotics in the past killing off the right organisms and then not being replaced. The second cause of dysbiosis is killing off the good organisms in the body with antibiotics. Also with antibacterial soaps and hand sanitizers. These products sold to us for only real, really commercial interest, not health, are actually bad for you because it's, they're more toxic than they are healthful. And once you start following the steps to healing, you do not need to use them or should not use them. The third cause is support of the wrong organisms with a high sugar, processed carb, yeast growing diet. Often dysbiosis is a cause of obesity and the person's ravenous hunger for processed carbs. If you get rid of the dysbiosis, weight loss becomes much easier. Now the correct organisms are Lactobacillus acidophilus and Lactobacillus bifidus. And the best replacement preparation is HMF, which is a human strain of these organisms that colonizes the entire body. You can get HMF from my website. You might have a question about the probiotics in yogurt. First, probiotics in yogurt are from cows, not humans. So they are great for calves, but they don't colonize the human body. Also, the yogurt is high in sugar and all milk products are acidifying. More can be learned about the unhealthy nature of dairy in the Nutrition for Healing DVD. And what about other probiotics you can buy at the store? Well, probiotics are living organisms. So at room temperature, they will live out their lifespan and die. So probiotics sitting on the store shelf are dead when you purchase them. The probiotics at the health foods outlet stores that are in the refrigerator should be better, but they are still not human form. So they will have the same failure to colonize the body as those in yogurt. Now the sixth step in the steps to healing is to tonify your chi. Remember, chi is the vital energy which makes up the universe. Chi permeates everything. It flows around and through the body, forming a co cohesive and functioning unit. The practice of working with chi is called qigong. It involves rapid, I'm sorry, rhythmic breathing coordinated with slow, stylized movement, a calm, mindful state, awareness and visualization, and it is traditionally viewed as a means to cultivate and balance chi. Modern practices involving chi today are martial arts, tai chi, and acupuncture. The importance of chi is to understand what happens in the body when chi is exhausted. When stress occurs, chi is expended. And when the chi is not restored, or when the stress is continuous, the person can become chi deficient. When there is deficiency of chi, the immune system cannot be revitalized and disease is imminent. Regular qigong is essential to a healthy system, just as good nutrition and pure water. Some herbs and homeopathics restore qi, but the primary method should be regular qigong. Also, simple meditation can also restore qi. The last or seventh step to healing is to give the body proper nutritional support. It is important, or sorry, it is impossible to heal and build new tissue if the raw ingredients are still missing. Nutrition is the basis for good health. You can't heal if your diet is unhealthy, no matter how many supplements or natural remedies you take. Remember, healing involves removing toxins from the body. That is like punching holes in a bucket filled with water. But if more water is being poured into the bucket than is coming out, the bucket will stay full. So if there are more toxins going into the body than can be removed in the same amount of time, then the body will remain toxic and healing will not be evident. The modern American diet is unhealthy because of the acidity and the toxin load. An entire DVD 
is devoted to explaining the proper healthy diet called Nutrition for Healing. I would recommend you get it to help you in your journey of finding or maintaining optimum health. So, to review, the seven steps to healing any disease are 1. Eliminate energetic roadblocks and environmental toxins. 2. Open the organs of cleansing. 3. Restore the enzyme systems of the body. 4. Remove the toxins. 5. Remove the dysbiosis. 6. Tonify the chi. And 7. Provide proper nutritional support for good health through an alkaline diet. I would like to thank you for your attention. I hope you have learned something here that can help you in your journey to healing or maintaining optimal health. Remember, you have the capacity and now the knowledge to enable your body to cure any chronic disease, prevent disease that hasn't been expressed yet, and live healthfully into your elder years. It just takes a change in lifestyle. And after you change, you will have so much more vitality, you will wonder why you hadn't done it earlier. You will find the products I have here, recommended here on my website, 7 com. Everything you need to get started on the 7 Steps to Healing is available there. Other DVDs you might be interested in getting if you haven't already are The Real Cause of Drug Abuse, Nutrition for Healing, The 7 Pillars of Health, Prolotherapy, Homeopathy, Auricular Therapy, and Fibromyalgia. These DVDs and others are or will be available on my website. Now, as a thank you for attending and listening to this video, and I also hope you become a subscriber to my YouTube presentations, I am offering a three-disc package to you at fantastic savings. You will get the three DVDs, the seven steps to healing, the real cause of drug abuse, and nutrition for healing. The combo is called Drug Abuse Combo on the website, and the regular price would be $111. But for attending this video, I will sell it at only $87. That is getting three valuable DVDs for less than the price of two. So when you place your order, use the coupon code YouTube. So again, thank you for your time, and I wish you good health and good healing.